In this episode of Cars Plus, we're going to cover a restoration bog on the 1976 Chevy C10. We're going to show you a number of things from under the hood to inside the cab to things on the outside of the vehicle that we have done to make improvements or restore things to where they were previously. We basically got most of the vehicle systems back up and running sands the radio and the air conditioning system but other than that we've got them all together we've got some suggestions some tips sort of some reviews in a way of some of the items where we purchased them things that you might want to know and in particular at the end of the video and part way through you're going to want to know why we put on a front hitch mount and we're going to show you how we use it so you really want to stay tuned probably for that and see how useful a front hitch mount is on a pickup truck most people don't have them most people might not have a use for them but if you do you're going to love having one of those Here we are at the battery in the Chevy C10, and we've added a master battery disconnect to the negative side of the battery. This is the Frankenstein style, which I kind of like. It makes it real easy to do. It's great if it's a 12-volt system. If you had a 6-volt system, this isn't heavy enough, and I wouldn't use it. But it works good if you're restoring your vehicle, or you just want to work on it, because I can just shut off the power just like that. Really nice to have. Besides that, we have not yet replaced the other battery clamp here. You can see it's cracked completely through. It's working. Yes, I do have to get to it. Haven't gotten to it yet. Down below, we've replaced the entire battery box assembly. Reason for the replacement is it was completely shot, rotted out, and the former owner used a bent license plate to sort of rig it up and make it work to hold the battery at least in the vehicle. We took all that out fix the mounts in the inner fender here or quarter panel and added a new battery box from LMC truck with new bolts and a new clamp here on the back so that we could actually hold the battery down a universal clamp does not seem to work with this particular holder so we got the actual clamp in here holds the battery really well the negative of this battery box is it doesn't quite line up correctly even though we're using correct original mounts here and down below, it doesn't work with the tank. And we've got a brand new radiator coolant tank, overflow tank there, that we've added. The old one was crusty and mostly, besides being crusty and yellow, it was broken on the top in this area. So we've replaced that and added a new hose and a new clamp and a new radiator cap. But as we said, this reproduction tank from LMC truck and that battery box don't quite line up and we had to modify the battery box to make it work it's fine this isn't a restoration but if somebody were restoring it's interesting that those two parts don't perfectly made up with uh, each other when mounted in the truck the way GM had done it originally up here we also have another addition these are new clamps now back in the 70s GM was using this plastic wire loom and these clamps I went into O'Reilly Auto Parts and said, you know, I need clamps for plastic wire loom. I said, how about plastic wire loom clamps? Punched it in the computer. That is what they're called, and they were able to order them. And so as necessary, I've gone through and replaced broken or misting plastic wire loom clamps. Just like GM would have had them. They weren't very expensive, and they're put back on. They're nylon parts. Let's look at the power steering pump. In an earlier video, we talked about the fact that we replaced the power steering pump and the high pressure line and low pressure line. The power steering pump had been leaking like a sieve and as long as we were replacing the pump, figured we might as well replace both lines. They're probably as old as the pump, which might have been original. So they've all been redone. Moving on up from there, we get to our windshield washer tank. Now, just as we replaced the radiator coolant tank, we opted to replace this tank because it was old, yellow, crusty, cracked, and it was so bad it wouldn't even have held much fluid. So we opted for a new one from LMC Truck. So far we just mounted it with the old bolts. Didn't do anything special there. And we've added a brand new hose, 
as we follow our hose over, we get to the new windshield washer pump. Windshield washer pump was not working. We bought only the pump portion of the mechanism from LMC truck. You can get parts from multiple suppliers for these old Chevys if you want to. So that was put in. We left the two original hoses here and here, which run up to the nozzles to squirt on the windshield because they were in good shape. They seemed to be fine, so we're using the originals in that case. Next up, we have a green wire, which is right here. This green wire actually is the wire that comes from the instrument cluster for the coolant temperature. That green wire was cut off by the former owner. We don't know why, but it was cut off back by the firewall. And had to find it, finally found it, and had to put a new end on it. And the new end is the white wire down here, which goes to the temperature sender right there. The white wire, this color comes in to replace it. Green is the correct, so if you really were making a restoration, you want it green all the way down. I don't think the temperature sensor works perfectly. The gauge works now, but I think I'm probably going to actually have to replace the temperature sender. haven't done it yet. You'll also notice we added the plastic wire loom and clamps on top of the valve cover there like it should be so we could run the wire down. Now a couple other things you want to notice in this area before we get too far. We did the dipstick and the dipstick tube. They were totally rusty and we were in the area, took them out, cleaned them up, wire brushed them, panned them with exo rust silver paint. Looks really nice, easy to do, improves the looks. We're, again, we're not after a restoration, it just was a nice color to use. Valve covers themselves have been completely redone reason for that was is both valve cover gaskets were leaking so if i'm going to do the gaskets i figured well, i might as well do the valve covers and to do something different and nice i opted for a wrinkle finish you'll find on our channel that we have a wrinkle finish video that tells you how to make the wrinkle finish paint work with a foolproof manner and you really do want to watch that because the instructions on the can do not cause your wrinkle finish paint to work every time but our instructions in the video will correct that and you get a beautiful finish. So click on the link if you want to see that video and see how that's done. Also, we took all the original hardware around the valve cover. It's all been cleaned up totally. We put that through a rock tumbler and uh, it cleans it up perfectly, removes all the rust, etc., paint. And then we came back and we did metal blackening, which we also have a video on the channel that you might want to watch. It shows you how to do that. It's very, very easy to do at home. And blackened metal parts are used on lots of different things, whether they're vehicles, guns, etc. They're used in numerous applications on machinery. And it's just a real easy thing you can do at home if you want to. Next up, we come to our air cleaner. You can see the top of the air cleaner I've redone. It was rusty. It's far worse than the bottom of the air cleaner was. And so I cleaned that up, repainted it. I have not yet done the lower portion of the air cleaner. And there's a very important reason for that. The reason the lower air cleaner is not done is because this tube going into the valve cover right here, which has been refinished, really should be going in this hole and not in the hole it's currently going in. Why it was ever modified, I'm not sure, but it has been modified and we have to correct this. And so I'm going to have to do that in the future. And the reason you want to correct it is this should be pivoted a little more this way because there is a tube mount right underneath here. You cannot see my hands pointing up to it. That's supposed to have a tube going from that point down to that point. But again, this should be more in this area. And since I'm going to use the original 350, I figured, well, I'll put it back the way it's supposed to be. So in the future, that's one of the things I still have to do. As you can see, we've also got wire clamps over here for the plastic wire loom. So it's mounted the way it's supposed to be mounted back onto the engine at the moment. Moving on from there, we come over to our heating and air conditioning system. A lot of the air conditioning stuff is currently missing, but some of it's in here. What obviously happened is the compressor probably froze up and the former owner took off the compressor, didn't have the money to replace it, and took some of the stuff off and never replaced it. We'll eventually get to that. So far, the two things we have had to do is we replaced the relay here on the side. 
That's a part you can pick up like at any auto parts store real easy. That's been replaced. We've also replaced our blower motor. Now the blower motor actually did work, but the problem it was having is if it stopped in just the right place, it wouldn't start again unless you went and hit it. So it had a dead spot in it. So I opted to replace it. If you've noticed when we've gone around the engine bay here, it's a lot cleaner if you've watched one, our first video on it. We've cleaned up the engine bay a whole lot. Obviously you can see the wear and tear on it, but as far as all the dirt and grime, most of it's been removed. Yes, there's still some here and there, but it's been radically cleaned. So it was nicer to work on. And I personally think clean vehicles are happier vehicles, it seems to be. And so over time, we'll do more things to clean it up and finish it up to look nice. All right, on the front of the truck, we've added a receiver hitch right below the skull there. A receiver hitch on the front of a truck, most people don't have one and they don't realize how useful it could be. We'll give you a little demonstration in a bit about how useful that actually is. In order to do that on the front of the truck, we had to add a U-shaped mount for the receiver mount. The U-shaped mount we had bent up a Prescott steel. It's roughly three inches in height. It's made out of quarter inch steel, about two inches on each end, folded over, making a nice U. It's welded in between the two front frame members, complete with two little L-shaped brackets that we had cut out of a material that was L-shaped over there, quarter inch thick, and we welded those in. Now the bracket isn't is sort of welded in roughly. The receiver hitch has been welded in seriously, and it'll all be welded in perfectly. But it makes a great way to move a trailer. And as I said, we're going to show you how it's useful. It's obviously you're not driving down the highway with this, but there are reasons you would really want to have a front receiver hitch if you want to wrangle a trailer around in a small area. Coming inside the truck here, we made a lot of improvements already. You can notice around the edge of the door that we've replaced all the weather stripping. We've redone the door pillar. All of those products are available from LMC Truck, and I must tell you, they're fairly expensive. They make a huge difference, gets rid of all the excess noise, sound, and of course the weather leaks. One of the things that's real important is the rubber piece around your front vent window. This comes in pretty stiff. It's hard, fairly hard to install, and realistically, once you install it, I would leave it shut for a while before you try to use it, just so it sort of conforms and gets used to having the window there. And it is so hard to close at first, you really have to pull on it, you almost think you'll break your vent window. But by leaving this for a while, it works really well. You'll also notice that we've replaced the door panel. This is the way the door panel was originally on the truck. I happened to find a pair of these on eBay, very reasonable. They were tan, and we've completely refinished them in black. And there's a video on the channel that covers how to redo plastic. Very, very easy. You follow the instructions in that video, and you can see how to do that for your truck if you want to. In a later video, we're going to cover how we redid the wood grain. And we actually refinished the wood grain, plastic wood grain piece that was there. Door pocket also comes from LMC truck, so does the handle, all the seals, everything outside, inside the door, etc. All of it's available from LMC truck. Remember, it's also available from other suppliers in a number of cases, but their products are the ones we used in this case. You'll also notice that this is finished in the red that we're going to use on the outside as well as the inside of the truck. Doesn't show as well in this shot, but this is candy apple red. It shows much better when we have it in the sunlight thing to note in the door jam area that particular area you can't completely paint with the door on the truck now we have rehung the doors because the former owner like many amateurs are they think oh i gotta take the door off to start doing stuff except they don't keep the shims etc in the right place measure or mark anything and so the doors weren't hung right they're now hung right but we will have to pull them to paint inside the door jams when we do that we will use the markings created with the paint to show us exactly where to put them back. Down here you'll notice we have a new door jam switch. Both switches 
one on each side of the truck which control your dome light and your interior kick area light were completely rusted and shot. There are two versions of those door switches available. You need the cheap, simple one that just has two wires. It was like $16.95 a piece, maybe $7.95, not very much. And we replaced both of them. We've also replaced the entire weather strip going all the way around the door here. That is all new. That just pushes on. It's very easy to install. It comes a little bit too long and you cut it. You put your cut down here in the center on the bottom. We've also added a stainless steel piece to our door sill, which we like very much. It comes from LMC truck with foam tape. The foam tape wasn't worth anything. Wouldn't stick it down at all. We took the foam tape off and replaced it with Gorilla Glue brand double-sided uh, tape, and it works fantastic. Keeps it on beautifully. We actually did it before we painted. We masked it afterwards. We've also got the two sill pieces that belong in here. Those are also LMC truck. They've been put in now. Obviously, we'll pull them when we do the carpet in the future. But at the moment, we've got them installed down here in the door. So we have got this portion on this side of the door in the cab basically done, except we're going to have to take the door off and do a little bit in the interior, as I said there. Now, a neat thing is, is we're using lacquer paint, and we cover how to use this lacquer paint from Duplicolor in another video on the channel. And lacquer, you can just spray right over it, instantly use it, so it's perfect for this sort of job. And that's what we've used for the red throughout. As we come into the truck, we've done the lower portion of the dash in most of the area, redone the brake release handle here, and what we've done there is cleaned it up, and we've actually used acrylic white paint that we got in an art supply store, filled in our letters, and wiped off the outside. Next to it, we've got a switch that was in here. We're not sure what the switch might have done originally. We do know it didn't do what we did with it, which we have now added a bed light to the outside, and we have made sure that switch worked, and that's our bed light switch now on this vehicle. Above it, you can see that we've added a new cover for our instrument area. We found on the internet there's somebody making one with a new uh, wood grain finish, plastic wood grain, and so we've added that. Uh, we've cleaned up our instrument gauges here, but we're going to have to replace the plastic. We've got a crack down here, so we eventually will replace that. We've replaced the control indicator for the shift, which works but doesn't work. What's really wrong with it is the spring's too light. Off, we have to bring it all the way to first in order to get it go back in the proper position when you shut the vehicle off in park. So the spring is too weak, which is one of those typical things that a lot of Chinese-made items were not real happy with that. We've replaced both the lower vent and the upper vent. Those are brand new, came from LMC truck. Light switch has been replaced from LMC truck. Also, we did our heat and air conditioning control. It was just, it was pretty ratty looking, so we opted to replace that in the vehicle. We have the crummy radio, which wasn't original in here, that was poorly installed. We took that out. It was junk. We're going to get one that actually fits it and looks original, but has Bluetooth in it. Up here, we've done the steering column, painted it, cleaned up the handles. We previously told you we fixed the turn signal and added a new steering wheel. We have also got the filler plate down in here, both the plastic and the metal. And the metal one, that came from LMC truck. I don't know if it's the same one everybody uses, but all frank honesty, it literally does not fit correctly, and you have to modify it to make it to fit. There is no way I could get that to fit, even though it's supposed to be the right part. I had to make minor changes behind it to make everything work out and actually screw together and fit there so I haven't yet painted that red. Here we have our tank switch for the dual tanks. It's now fully operational. One of the wires in the back of it had been damaged or cut by the former owner. And because of where it was, we didn't want to go looking for it. We got a wiring diagram, rehooked it up. So now it works properly. We've also cleaned this. This is a plastic part. We've cleaned it with brake fluid to get off all of the uh, various paint overspray that the former owner had gotten on it and standard brake fluid will remove paint from plastic not hurt the plastic at all 
Once we'd done that, we came back and we painted the letters using acrylic white paint from the art supply store, as we said. And in this case, we happened to utilize a toothpick to touch up the letters. It was the best way we could possibly do it. So now you can read it like you should be able to. Right next to it, we have fixed our ashtray assembly. Previously, this was just literally falling out of the instrument panel. It just was, it was in bad shape. Part of it was missing as far as its springs that mounted it. It also had a broken ear on it. And so as a consequence, you couldn't close it and keep it in. You also couldn't close it properly without adding the ear so that you could have everything balanced out. And you have to add all four of the rubber bumpers back in it so it works properly. We also re refinished the actual ashtray by cleaning it up and treating it with the Eastwood tin zinc plating system. We're never going to use it, don't smoke, but that yeah, just makes it look nice. The real thing we were after here, besides making it not fall the instrument panel, was to get a good plug in so we could actually have a cell phone charger in use in the vehicle. And so we did that also. That was the major thing we were after, was getting that functioning and we got a brand new one from LMC truck instead of using the old one because we wanted it to be in really good shape. This entire ashtray assembly was painted outside of the instrument cluster, had to be, and then to put it in we found if you take out this screw down here, which I'm pointing to, you take that screw out and you can get a little movement this way in the instrument panel, this one right there, and you also have to take out the lower portion of your duct work, which if the camera can swing over to the right, the lower portion of the duct work that's in this area, that has to be removed. And if you remove that lower portion of the duct work and take out that screw, you can get enough room to slide your entire ashtray assembly in up behind the back. We totally covered it with tape when we did that to keep it from getting scratched, but that's how we painted it and painted the opening separate to doing the rest of the instrument panel because I didn't want to pull this whole thing out of the vehicle. I would have had to take everything apart, didn't feel like doing that, so we didn't do it that way. Beyond the ashtray, we come over here to our glove box, which used to be that if I opened the glove box, it fell on the floor. The reason that happens is the glove box is plastic, but it also contains the hinge as part of the plastic. That's the way GM made it. Well, that was all worn out, so we had to buy a new interior plastic piece, which includes the hinge from LMC Truck. And now you can close and open the glove box door and everything's beautiful. And it isn't falling on the floor the moment that you open it. So that's been changed. Obviously, we've talked about how we painted all this. And as I said, that's in another video on the channel. Down here, you can see I've got my hand lit up. We've got the light functional again for your kick area when you get in. And that works obviously with your door switch as we talked about earlier. Also works with the dome light up above that we have likewise replaced because most of this dome light up here in the top was completely missing from the vehicle. The lens was completely missing. The rest of it was in crummy condition. So we bought a brand new one from LMC truck and put that in right here. Making a great improvement because you have light at night. Up front, our instrument top will eventually be replaced. Looks terrible now. But that's about a $400 piece and probably about the last thing we'll do in the interior because we want to get the radio and a number of other things done before we do that. At that time, we'll tell you and show you the technique for how to refinish your plastic wood grain without having to have to start over. And a very inexpensive method of doing that. Here you can see we have totally redone the seat. So if you haven't watched the video, there's a video on the channel on how to do this. We did this redo on the seat with a seat cover kit from LMC truck, but we did something special. You really want to watch the video because we show you how to repair the foam on the upper seat cushion. And that saved us about $500 if I remember correctly, because we had to buy both foam pieces as one kit and we didn't want to do that because the bottom was good and it was the top that was damaged and we fixed it. And as you can see, and you'll see in the video, it looks beautiful. So our method for fixing it saved us a whole lot of money. In that video, we also covered the seat belts. These came from JEGS, saved us somewhere between $60 and $100. And we tell you and show you the modifications we did to put those in. They work great. 
They are not exactly restoration versions. You can get the restoration versions for a lot more money from LMC Truck and others. We opted for these because they do the job beautifully and we no longer have crummy seat belts in here. As you can see, there's a lot of things not done. We don't have all the little plastic panels. We don't have new sun visors yet. We don't have our carpet. We don't have our headliner. Those are all things to come in the future. Basically, we were working on the things to make it more comfortable for us to be in here and actually use the vehicle. On the side, at the passenger side, you can see that we still haven't done the passenger side door other than giving it the door panel, which we can remove when we do the red paint on that side and finish up the last of the weather strip on the upper portion of the door on that side. Up front, you can see we've got the bumper more or less mounted straight. It's been damaged. It was in an accident before. They didn't even put all the bolts back in there. It was half hanging off in the past, so at least we've got it bolted back on. This will eventually be replaced. There's no point in replating that bumper. You can buy brand new plated bumpers for so much less than you could even replate it that you might as well just buy the brand new one and forget it. So that'll be changed in the future to a brand new bumper. Right above the bumper on each side on the front, We've got the new lenses for the turn signals. Those have been purchased brand new. There's no point in getting those from a junkyard. They're just going to be crummy. The new ones are beautiful. They come from LMC truck. They're reasonable. So we're using those there. Coming around to the side, sight marker lights have been replaced with new lenses again. One of the things we discovered is the former owner either didn't have bulbs in them or had them all burned out. So we replaced those all the way around. Again, brand new LMC truck. They're very good. Back here at the door, these are the actual rear view mirrors that were on the vehicle. We had to do some relocation mounting to get everything right. This one at least was clearing the vent window, but it wasn't at the right height so we've changed it you can see the old outline we changed it got the height right but the mirror goes in when you go faster or if you close the door it goes in so we're actually going to have to replace them at least we've got them mounted where we're going to use them in the future already got new door handles they're not on here but i do have them brand new right here we've replaced both tank caps they look pretty crummy. We've just replaced them with new ones. They're available at normal auto parts stores. Those did come from LMC Truck just because they had them, but I could have gotten them right in the store here in town. As we move to the back, we replaced the entire light assembly on each side with a brand new assembly. These came from LMC Truck. The assemblies are beautiful. They drop right in. Everything works gorgeous. They're relatively inexpensive. So we've got those on the truck. So we've got good lighting on the tail of the truck. When you look above here, if you look at the top of the cab, you can see the cab bed light that we added. That's the one I talked about, the switch inside. We added that. That's a real option for back then. I will tell you this, that the hardest thing you have to do is if you notice there's a line up there that goes side to side on the back of that truck cab. That's where the two pieces of sheet metal are welded together and there's a bent in piece inside. So the hardest thing you're ever going to do is cut through that area where you've got to put a hole in the dead center for your light. So that makes it a little more challenging installation, but that's the only thing that's challenging about it. And it's really worthwhile at night if I turned on that light. It does light this up beautifully. If we had the cover off, you have all the lights you need in the bed. Very nice to have. Below that, you'll notice that we've got a truck box on. We've chosen that truck box because it opens from the side, which means we can open it easily even with our tonneau cover on here. So that's why we've chosen that particular box. The tonneau cover is also covered on the channel in a video that explains why we chose this one, how we installed it, the positives, the negatives, in order to make it work. A couple of things that we might want to change in the future, but that's in that video. And in general, it makes a pretty good solution for what we wanted to do, which was protect the contents of the back of the truck from being seen by the public but more importantly we wanted to protect the bed crane from being out in the weather all the time so the bed crane as you can see this tonneau cover everything we've done it clears it you'll find a video on the bed crane installation and how to do this properly so that this is actually able to handle the amount of weight we're putting on it you also find another video where we show you how we modified it by adding this 
hand crank winch. And yeah, it's true you could add an electric winch, but for the amount of uh, lifting distance we'd probably ever use on it, we didn't even justify the idea of wanting to put in an electric winch. But it could be done if somebody wanted to go to that effort. So that's what's been done here. Eventually, we will be finishing off the inside of the bed with a bed liner product, and we'll cover that for you sometime. Last thing to talk about is on this side, we also had to move the mirror, but this isn't a height issue. This is an issue that it was mounted at this point on this side, which meant you couldn't use the vent window. So whoever done the installation of these was pretty ham-handed at it. We've corrected the location. Again, both these mirrors will be replaced with brand new ones. It's just that we've got the correct mounting system now on the vehicle so we could actually do it. So in, we've given you an overview of a number of the things we've done on the truck. In fact, most everything that we've done on the truck to date and let you know that there are a number of videos that cover these things in more in depth if you want to see how to do them whether it is the wrinkle paint whether it is how to change the plastic color or how to cover the seat that's all covered in videos that you can look at individually or you can look in a playlist that we've got at the end of this video one of the other things you want to know is stay tuned through the end of the video through the credits because you're going to want to see how we utilize that front hitch to actually maneuver the trailer underneath the max jacks without that front hitch it'd be a hell of a job even with people helping you with the front hitch it really does something cool gives you the idea of how you can wrangle a trailer around in a small area mm -hmm.